just to the left of center of your chest or thoracic cavity, you have a heart. And I'm going to try and draw that heart. Now, I'm going to kind of draw it metaphorically rather than physiologically. Wowzers. Um, and I'm also going to fill that heart in red. Let's have a look at that. How's that looking? Not too, not too shabby, even if I do say so myself. Now, imagine the situation. We, we Hopefully, you have studied this already, but the, one of the main blood vessels departing or exiting, exiting the heart is the aorta. And the aorta leaves the left ventricle and it arches up from behind the heart like this. And there's a few um, on this arch. There's a few, it's not through proportion, by the way, but there's a few kind of departure and uh, points here and some, some smaller arteries leading away. But here we have our aortic arch. And I want you to imagine for a second, and it's a horrible thought really, but I want you to imagine that we sort of cut the aorta there I don't know if I'm talking about yours or just one in general and what we've got now is we've got a bunch of blood leaving this vessel look here it's boom 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 it's leaving like this it would make a right old mess let's be let's be blunt and let's draw some kind of vessel to catch it in and I'm going to imagine that mine is some kind of bucket there it is what a fine bucket that is now the question I want to ask you guys is if we were to allow this heart to kind of spurt blood out sort of 70 beats uh, in a minute at rest for example and about seven milliliters of blood leaving per beat how much blood would we expect to be in here after one minute and the answer is something along the lines of five liters so that is about it's five l that's meant to be let me write that better um five l i'm not sure that is better five liters of blood in here and that five liters of blood is our cardiac output so let's be really clear that is our cardiac output now what i want to do is i want to ask the question of well where does that five liters go okay we've sort of sliced ours and cut it off <clears throat> we're catching it in a bucket but in real life of course this blood is flushing around the body and finding uh, and, and arriving at different, t different tissues so where is it going so at rest and let me be clear we are talking here at rest at rest what's happening is the following okay so we're going to find that something like something like 15% uh, of that blood so something like 15% of that blood is going to go to the muscle and I want to be crystal clear here we are talking about the skeletal the vo voluntary muscles the muscles of your arms of your legs of your face we're not talking about the sort of deep internal muscle here of like the heart itself and the smooth muscle around uh, arteries and arterioles no we're talking about the blood going to muscles which might be involved in movement or tone <coughs> excuse me and we've got another bunch of this blood in fact, not surprisingly, 85% to make up our 100, 85% of that blood is going to other organs, okay? So we're talking there about the pancreas, we're talking about the liver, we're talking about the small intestine, we're talking about the stomach, we're talking about, I don't know, the skin. Most blood, most of this 85%, in fact 4.25 litres if we've got 5 litres, is going to other organs at rest. Now, the question I want to ask is the following. If I was to take, if I was to make a selection, and I was to select this here, right? So let's get, let's get that there. Let's copy it. Let's paste it. Let's drag ourselves down a little bit. So let's come down here, and let's take that image. So we made a copy of it like that. What then happens during exercise? Now, during exercise, First of all, we know that heart rate increases. We know that stroke volume increases. Therefore, more, more blood is shooting out of this broken pipe per contraction. Okay, And as a result of that, our level of blood is going to be far greater. In fact, it could be, and often it is, up to 20 litres of blood per minute. Okay, Remember, that's our cardiac output. And why is that? I mean, just remind yourself that cardiac output, cardiac output, equals equals stroke volume I'm just going to put SV times heart rate okay now what we're saying here is that both the stroke volume and the heart rate have increased and therefore we've got a greater quantity of blood leaving the ventricle per minute to the left ventricle per minute now the question I want to now ask is well how much of that blood now gets to the muscle we've got more blood wonderful but we also need to realize that arriving at the muscle, now perhaps we want to call it the working muscle, we have up to 85% of that now larger total. And arriving at the other organs, such as the skin, say, uh, such as the uh, stomach, say, we have 
only 15%. The only thing I'd mention to you that's worth just considering is it's, it seems like lots of our other organs are getting less blood. Remember, it's 15% of a much larger total, so there might be some decline in delivery, but there's still going to be a substantial delivery, so just bear that in mind. Now, that's all well and good. The question we want to ask is, well, okay, fine, but how? How does this happen? And there's a couple of systems I'd like you to be aware of. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, where's it gone? I'm going to get my sort of circle tool here. I'm going to make it way smaller than that. I'm going to hopefully make it a bit more circular. And I'm going to draw here for you. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to draw here for you an artery. And then I'm going to take this over here. And I'm going to draw another one. Now, let me just get rid of that a second. Just to be clear here, this one here is an artery which is leading to the muscle. And we are, by the way, here talking about during exercise. And this artery here is leading to, let's say, let's just call it another organ. Other organs. So I don't know, it could be the stomach, say, for argument's sake. Now, this is the point, guys. I'm going to bring my circle tool back in, and I'm going to bring it over here, and I'm going to make you realize that this vessel here, I'm going to use a different color, let's use a pinky color, it kind of represents our endothelial inner lining, don't worry about that word. I'm going to draw that there. And what I'm going to do is I'm also, if I can, without messing this up, I'm also going to try and fill that little gap there. That was not where I wanted it to be. See if I can do it better than that. There we go. So what have we got now? We've got a situation where this is what we call smooth muscle. Okay, so this smooth muscle, this smooth muscle, which is part of the arterial wall, it is vasodilated. <laughs> vasodilated. In other words, if I was to take some kind of, uh, in fact, let's, let's bring the ruler in. If I was to take some kind of measuring device, such as a ruler, and I was going to sort of measure the distance of this opening. In fact, let's not call it a distance. Let's call it a diameter. Okay, let's call it a diameter, and let's specifically refer to it as the lumen. The lumen is the space within the vessel. We can see here that this is pretty wide because this pink smooth muscle is vasodilated. In other words, it's opened up, it's relaxed, it's sort of, ah, if you see what I mean. Now, let's do exactly the same with our blood vessel, our artery leading to the other organ. What's going to happen here is that this one here, I got the right color. Yes, I have. The, the smooth muscle in this case is going to vasoconstrict. So notice what we've got here. We have got vasoconstriction, vasoconstriction of the smooth muscle, which this time is, is leading it's the vessel leading to the other organs. Now, what does that mean for us? It means that, again, if I was to take my measuring tool, if we were literally measuring this, we could say that, look, that lumen. I don't know why I say it with accent. <laughs> uh, this lumen, this lumen here now has a much smaller, uh, or the lumen is much smaller, okay? So that distance between. Now, the point is the following. Here, this reduces resistance, okay? Which means that more blood will flow through it. And this, of course, increases resistance, which means less blood will flow, flow through it. So we can now see at least one of the reasons why a greater proportion of blood is delivered to the muscle during exercise and to the other organs during exercise. Now, one thing I'll just say to you, I don't think you'd get this, but if you've got a question and it asked, it asked you about after exercise or it asked you about... Um, if it asked you about, let's say, da, 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 after exercise or asked you about recovery phase, you know, sort of during the cool down or something like that, it's an R in there, just be aware that this and this would have to swap over, okay, because the exact opposite happens as we are recovering, okay, the exact opposite as we return back to our resting levels. But I really want you to focus on vasodilation. I really want you to focus on vasoconstriction. I mean, the thing to bear in mind here is that what's happening here is that this smooth muscle is just experiencing different levels of tone. It's a nice word to use if you can. We call it tone, that muscular contraction. Here, of course, we've got more tone, and here we've got less tone. That leads to dilation and constriction of those vessels. I think that's all from me for today. Um, I'll just allow you to reflect on my magnificent drawing.